Today I'm gonna teach you how to set up a bearded dragon tank. This is a 120 gallon, a four by two by two, a minimum for adult bearded dragons. A lot of people have trouble setting these things up, getting the right temperatures, getting the heat down perfectly. And today I'm gonna show you how. Let's get into it, shall we? So the first thing to do when setting up a tank is choosing the right substrate. The best substrate you can use for a bearded dragon are Jurassic Natural Australian sand, which is taken directly from where bearded dragons live. Next up is play sand. Like children's play sand, you can get at Home Depot. It's one of my favorite, but there's also repti sand. Now repti sand, unfortunately gets a lot of hate, but in reality, it's the exact same thing as play sand, but sifted to get a finer blend. Repti sand is quartz sand that is natural to rivers, beaches, and deserts. I get tons of people saying it's horrible and it will kill bearded dragons. If that's true, there would be no bearded dragons in Australia because the sand dragons live on is also 95% quartz sand. Now my favorite substrate is topsoil mixed with play sand with some peat moss added in. You can recreate this using six bags of repti soil, two bags of excavator clay, and two bags of repti sand. I will have a whole video breaking this down as well and I'll link it in the description. So whichever substrate you choose, go ahead and add that into the tank. I prefer about four to six inches of substrate, but you only have to do a minimum of two for most enclosures. Now for this Ecoflex 120 gallon tank, I used 15 gallons of the DIY mix of play sand, topsoil, and peat moss. It took three Home Depot buckets worth. That's how I know it was 15 gallons. This is 57 liters for the non-Americans as well. After this, you can add some branches because bearded dragons do love to climb and it's great to provide them opportunities to climb. I'll have some branches linked in the description on my Amazon storefront, but I get all my branches outside. It's super simple. I just go into the woods, I find a tree I like, and I cut off a branch. Or I find some driftwood near creeks, rivers, or beaches. There's tons of wood you can use, but the ones you wanna stay away from is pine and cedar. If you do get wood off the ground and wanna sanitize it, you can bake it for 250 degrees for two hours. I will either just let it sit for a few days or fill my bathtub up with boiling hot water and let it soak in the water for a couple of hours. Now, let's talk about basking spots. So there's two types of basking spots you can use for a bearded dragon. A rock basking spot where the heat lamp and UVB shine down on a rock or branches. Basking spots in all of my enclosures are wooden branches as bearders in the wild will bask on trees and fence posts. So I choose the wood style, but either one of these styles will work. Just choose which one you want. Now I get my rocks from outside as well. Again though, if you live in a place that just can't do that, you could go to local landscaping places or a Home Depot, which has bricks like this and flagstone, which is flat rocks, perfect for basking. As you can see in the video though, I am using rocks underneath the basking spot as well as the branches. These being below my basking spot will also work as a secondary basking site for my bearded dragon. I then add more rocks throughout the enclosure. Now myself, I add real plants, but as a bare bone tank, this will work great for your bearded dragon. Throw in a water bowl and food bowl and you're done on the inside. But now let's talk about what confuses everyone and that is lighting. So the biggest problem everyone has is getting hot enough temperatures in a 120 gallon tank. And there is a very simple way to fix that. The most simple way is usually you wanna have two heat lamps. I see this all the time. Someone gets a 120 gallon tank and they still have one heat lamp. You need two for most 120 gallon tanks depending on how hot your house is. But I use two heat lamps on all of my four by two by twos. Next up, you don't want a deep heat projector or ceramic heat emitter. Stick to high wattage, regular basking bulbs like the Zoomed, Exoterra, Thrive, Arcadia, Zilla, and any other type of basking bulb. For example, I set up an experiment for you. This is a brick and I'm gonna have a deep heat projector, 80 watts right over it for 15 minutes. This is the reading of the brick before I turned it on. As you can tell, it's 65 degrees, pretty even 65 degrees. I have it in a 20 gallon long tank, so it's 12 inches away. You can see the DP projector is on, and 15 minutes later, this is what it was reading. So in 15 minutes, it went up four degrees. Now I got a new brick. It is reading a base temperature of 66 degrees. I know it's different, but it's just the way it is. And I put a zoom at 75 watt above this. After 15 minutes, this gave me a reading of 80 degrees. That's right. It went up 14 degrees compared to four. And that's why I highly recommend a regular basking bulb over a ceramic heat emitter or a DP projector. I use two 100 watt heat lamps, the zoom ed kind for mine. Now, if you live in a colder climate, you may have to use 150 watt heat lamps or maybe even three heat lamps, but two works for me. Now, after you do that, check to see if your basking spot reaches 105 minimum with a temp gun. If you aren't getting 105 temperatures with a temp gun, what you could do next is you can move the basking spot higher. 
how you would do this is you would get more rocks or tree limbs and basically just raise the basking spot. But you don't want it super close to the top of the screen as well. I see a lot of people make this mistake. I wouldn't get as close as eight inches away from the screen myself. Once you get to around six or four inches away, your dragon will be getting exposed to very high and even dangerous levels of UVB and the heat is getting way, the heat radiation only six inches away is pretty strong. For all of my enclosures, I do keep the basking spot eight inches away or farther, but in the corner of the tanks, if you see like my branches, they are a little bit higher and that's because they are away from the heat lamps. If you do it like that, that's totally fine. But I see people put their basking spot like this, where it's very close to the heat lamps and the UVB, that's what you don't want. But if it's away and the branch is kind of tucked in the corner, like you see right here, that's fine. It's just basically where the dragon is sitting directly under. If the heat is right there, that's what I'm talking about. Next up is UVB. You don't want coils, obviously. If you haven't heard, coils are too weak for bearded dragons. You want a T5, not a T8 either. I see a lot of people get T8s. Those are also too weak for a four by two by two. You want a T5 Arcadia 12 to 14% or a Zoomed 10.0. In this enclosure you see today, I'm using a Zoomed 10.0 and it doesn't matter, Arcadia 12% or the Zoom at 10.0 is gonna work. Either one works perfect for this size tank. One popular UVB everyone uses, which I do not recommend, is the Repti Zoo and many others on Amazon. I know they're cheap, but there's a reason for that. They are incredibly weak. And it's important to know that Beard Dragons need high UVB. Even if they get a small amount of UVB, it's not gonna be enough. Beard Dragons do need 3.0 UVI from UVB, of them being exposed to it. If they do not get that, they cannot produce D3 or absorb D3, so that means they can't absorb calcium and they will get metabolic bone disease. And that's why UVB is so important. Next up is LED daylight strips. I use LED daylight strips on the top of my enclosures as well, not only to bring up the brightness of the tank, but it just makes it look so much better as well. You can use these LED strips from Walmart or an Arcadia Jungle Dawn because Arcadia Jungle Dawns are kind of uh, available everywhere, but I use these daylight strips from Walmart and they work very well. And once you have that set up, you are done. And this is the finished result. I did add some plants, but you don't have to do that at all. You can just keep it plain like this right here or spruce it up more. Thanks for watching. If I helped, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.